What's good? I'm back in this bitch. I'm not going to talk about that other guy because my video for the first time ever, I understand what everybody's going through. I just got got. I'm well into the YouTube boxing community now. But um, my video just got flagged. I got this big ass red fucking um, mark on my screen talking about, you know, um, you can't be you can't be threatening people and you can't make it so people feel unsafe or something like that. They're saying I had to I had to put the battery in my back because like my I'm, and I'm touching this video goes out to my boy Black Vengeance. Um, I'm touching on it because he was saying he's a firm believer in people who need to get their ass whooped should get their ass whooped, and that's all I was carrying out, man, straight up. You know, I'm just glad I'm not the only one that feels bad about this whole thing because be honest with y'all you know i love the youtube boxing community i love disgusting fights coming up i love proving people wrong i love giving my prediction you know i love hearing other people's prediction i love when people prove me wrong you know um i think one of the only fights i got wrong was the mosey versus alvarez so other than that you know i'm the one that's really proving motherfuckers wrong but Let's move on, man. Shout out to Black Vengeance once again because I definitely want to speak on this Larry Merchant retirement. Can we all say it's about time? Can we all say that? No, seriously. Because it is about time, man. Go check out. If you think I'm bored, oh, man, listen. Like, I was hoping the boy was going to die first. I mean, I don't, I don't never wish death on somebody, but... Shit, it looks like he was heading that way, you know. Um, like, to be honest, I mean, Larry was just a racist, old school, no skill level CNI, meaning he, he doesn't care about anybody with skill. He just wants to see blood, banging, and someone getting knocked out. You heard what he said. It should have told you right away. All fights should end in a knockout, and that's motherfucking wrong. If you guys believe that shit, you're not a true fan of boxing, because that's not boxing, you know? Um, as strong as Amir Khan is, this nigga doesn't knock out pretty much anybody from what I'm looking at. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's that Judah, you know. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not really that, you know, I can care less that Larry's leaving. Hopefully we can bring in somebody else to fill his spot that is a boxer, you know? Um, like Duke said before, you know, I've said this before too, but, um, and I always say it again, when it comes to football, you guys, you know, everybody at the table, you got fucking, you got coach, they call one of the guys at the, at the table coach. You got straight hand, you got long, you got boomer, you got TJ, all these guys, I've played football. You got Dan Marino sometimes up there. Um, Shannon Sharp up there. All these guys have the inside of exactly how the game is played, you know. And when you when they do their interviews or when they when they get their chance to speak, they'll always seem to say something that only a real football NFL professional would know, you know. And that's what I that's what I like about the football, and that's why I'm so keen to it because. You know, I love hearing about who actually knows what the fuck they talking about. You know what I mean? When it comes to boxing, though, it's not like that, man. When it comes to boxing, we got we got three, four people up there who don't know what they're talking about. Like, I hope if, if Larry Merchant retires, they should bring in Teddy Atlas. You know, that's that's my nomination. I want Teddy Atlas to be at the fucking round table. They already, they finally, this fight with, um, with Pac, was it Pacquiao? Or was it Trout? It was either the Pacquiao or the Trout fight when, um, they finally gave credit to Roy Jones. They said, we're going to go now to our professional commentator, Roy Jones Jr. And I, I was so relieved, you know, so, because... Who is Larry Merchant to argue with Roy Jones Jr. himself, former world champion, former greatest of his era, definitely the 90s, he ran that shit in his division. 
Who is Larry Merchant, who has never laced up shit, who is a racist, who doesn't even really care about black fighters, to come on there, because you've been there longer, and tell a nigga like Roy, like they were getting argument matches, tell Roy he said shit wrong. You know, if you notice, when Roy became a commentator, right, Larry Merchant all of a sudden wasn't talking that much. You know what I mean? They would make jokes so they would get Roy on their side. But Roy clearly says, oh, I disagree. I feel that such and such. You know what I mean? Well, I don't believe that. I feel that. You know what I mean? Like, he's straight down the middle. He knows the fucking sport. So, Larry Merchant leaving, bringing another boxer who knows the sport? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm gun ho for this. I want this shit to be in fast forward motion. Like, hurry up already, you know what I mean? Larry should have been gone. Jim Lampley, just because he's, he's there, just because of the whole, you know, you need somebody to start it off. You know, you need somebody to keep everything under wraps. Um, and I understand why Jim could be there. Okay, that's cool. But as far as Larry's concerned, tell Larry to take a hike. He should have been to the hike. I can care less about Larry, you know. Um, I mean, you know, like I said, I would like Teddy Atlas to be there. If you notice in basketball at the round table, you got Charles Barkley. You got Charles Barkley. You got one guy who didn't play, but you got Kenny. You got... um. C. Webb, um, Chris Webber, you got, um, you know, the whole table's full of motherfuckers who have been in the game. It's just sad that HBO's taking this long, and they have the, excuse me, they have the money to pay the top quality contenders. You know what I mean? Like, as far as, like, a commentator, like, like, they should bring Ricky Hatton in. I'm not saying he's the greatest. He knows more about boxing than Larry does. You know what I mean? If you're going to retire, bring him in. You should, you should bring Pacquiao in. I know that sounds crazy. He just got knocked out. He ain't got shit to do. Tell that nigga to go on there and talk about how he's not going to get knocked out next time. You know what I mean? Like, you, you, you got the money to bring in legitimate people who know exactly what the fuck they're talking about. You want me, you want me to put it in better? Now, 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 look. I'm going to put it in better perspective. Look at all of the interviews. You don't have to take my word for it. Look at all of the interviews with Floyd Mayweather and Larry Merchant. He does them all, besides like one of them. And that was the one Shane Mosley jumped in the ring on. <laughs> one of, and at one point, Floyd just got fed up. You know, it's only a man, it's only a point in a man's in a man's life. Women don't understand in a man's life where we can only take so much and we have to retaliate, we have to explode. Maybe at that particular moment, it's not the greatest of times, but like I said, it's only a matter of time until somebody has to let loose everything, you know? That's why you got this whole, this whole BK Warriors and blood thing going on because it's only a matter of time until somebody feels what, what you're doing and what you're saying is not what's up, and you really want to strangle somebody's neck over it, you know what I mean, um, so, you know, as far, as far as, as far as Larry's concerned, man, he should have been left, the fans should have realized, this, this is my crib, y'all, I ain't got nothing to hide, yeah, it's my shit, I live here, this is my lawn, nigga, my driveway, those are my cars in the driveway, nigga, <laughs> I told you, don't get it twisted, nigga, I got plenty of room. <laughs> plenty of room, my niggas. Come on. This is lawn, nigga. What y'all working with? Lawn. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know I had to do a little touch up on my shit. But um You know, kick Larry Merchant to the curb. I don't give a fuck about his retirement. You know? Um now look, when 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 there's something bad with somebody, like there's probably always something bad about somebody. I don't think my tree is in the garage. There's always something bad going on. Um, you know, somebody's always doing some fucked up shit, you know, or saying some shit. Now, granted, Larry Merchant, racist. Um, he's racist. What I want to say real quick on the Floyd Mayweather um, interviews with Larry Merchant is go watch every single one of them. Look how much Larry 
downplays Floyd. It gets so much to a boiling point. That's why you saw in the Ortiz fight, he just got fed up. You don't know shit about boxing. It's the truth. You know, it's not about knockouts all the time. Floyd exploded. Look at all of look at all of Larry Mercer's videos with Floyd and interviewing. You're not gonna get to fight Gotti. Oscar De La Hoya will never fight you. He says this shit. He shits on him. I know body language, y'all. I know body language. So what I mean by that is whenever I'm in the store, right? Whenever I'm in the store and I hear over the loudspeaker, manager, we have a call on line one. Say the manager doesn't pick up, right? They'll say, manager, you have a call on line one. You know, it's very direct. You know, it, and in that voice, I came to it. You guys have to start to do the same. In that voice, you, I noticed that whoever said that, you know, that, that speech is pissed off now because the manager didn't answer the first time. You see what I'm saying? It's body language. That's how, that's as simple as I can give it to you. So when you see this Larry Merchant, you know, and you see Floyd, he'll joke but at the same time, he's dissing them, you know? Like, for instance, for instance, say, say somebody pulls in, right? Say somebody pulls into your lot. Say it's your boy, right? Say, say he pulls up in a new car, right? Say it's a 2009, okay? To diss him, and I've seen a lot of my friends diss other friends that I got. To diss him, one of my friends would say, What's that, a 09? He'll say, yeah, man, it's a 09. Just bought yesterday. What he'll say is, oh, well, that's cool. It's not 2012, though. It's not 2013. You see what I'm saying? You got a, you got a nice vehicle. You got, you got a 2009. But to downplay somebody real quick, to just shit on what they're doing, well, you ain't got no 2012. And he joking. You know what I mean? Or, or, or he'll say some shit like, well, if you had a 2013, you would probably be able to go 180 on the dash. I've seen 180. So technically, you're shitting on your boy because he doesn't have a 2013. Not giving him props for his 2009 that he has. You see how that works? This is what Larry does, and this is what Larry has did his entire career as far as interview with Floyd. You will not get a fight with motherfucking um, Arturo Gotti. I just spoke to Arturo Gotti. He doesn't want to fight you. Like, Larry, you did not speak personally to a Toro Gotti. And they told you, Larry Merchant, that they don't want to fight Floyd. I find that hard to believe. You see what I mean? I came to it. Dante562 can speak on it, too. We know body language. You know what I mean? That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. You guys have to realize the body language when people talk sometimes. That's why I got fed up with that other guy. <laughs> y'all know what it is. Because his body language was just that he was just too cocky and he felt like he was unstoppable. Nobody was going to say nothing and everything he says is right. Even if you try to give him constructive criticism, he'll say, well, I believe, you know, just shit on whatever you just said. Won't even take it into consideration, which you're supposed to do with constructive criticism. No, you're just one ear out the other and go right back to what you're saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, hey, you know, I would have loved it if Floyd hooked off on that nigga Larry. <laughs> Straight up. Now, I'll give Larry, like I was saying, people do bad things a lot, okay? But I'll give Larry Merchant one credibility. I'll give him one credit star out of five, okay? That's a very poor-ass score. He gets one. Why is that? Because... To be honest with you, and I'm going to be dead honest, okay? Yes, he did shit on Floyd his whole time coming up, you know? Um, he got a taste of his own medicine, finally. You remember you remember um, Leonard Ellaby? You heard him. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know shit about boxing. You heard him, that nigga, that nigga Ellaby. <laughs> he has to put in his two cents. <laughs> you know what I mean? But one star, one and one star only goes to Larry Merchant and that is it's starting to rain out here and that is that he does ask good 
questions. I do notice that, okay? He speaks slow as shit. Don't get it twisted. But he does ask good questions to what people want to know and what people want to hear, okay? When he's done, listen to his interviews with other fighters. You know, with Floyd, he'll shit on Floyd just because of who Floyd is. You know, we're not surprised at that. But look at his shit with other fighters, and you'll see for yourself that he just straight, he gives good questions, man. I cannot knock. I can't really explain it. I don't know it's not something word for word, but... He'll say something very slow, but he'll say a phenomenal question afterward, you know. When he gave Pacquiao his interview, phenomenal questions. I do have to give him props on that. Maybe it's just stuff that he wants to know personally, but he does, he does do really good on asking the future on certain fires when he does, you know, when he does a good job, you know. But... A one out of five star, you're failing. So with everything else on top, you being a racist, you not knowing the sweet science, you've never even boxed before, you had the nerve to argue with Roy Jones Jr. himself, then, yeah, it's, it's time for you to take a hike, homie. That's my take on it. Shout out to Black Vengeance. You ain't got to speak no more on it. But if something does come up, my dude, speak on it. Fuck that. If you feel like shit is out of, out of sync, Speak on it. I'll be right here to listen proudly, my nigga. I'm Ghost, man. Till next time.